The film Pride and Prejudice offers equipment for living for women seeking to build self-confidence and the ability to stand up for their own best interests. A paper by Carrie Graves, Queen's University of Charlotte, 2017. In researching Pride and Prejudice as equipment for living, I first had to go back to the sources of this rhetorical concept. The first being Kenneth Burke and his protégés, Brummett and Young. Burke, Brummett, and Young, spanning the course of decades, agree that films can provide useful storylines in which viewers can identify themselves, finding comfort in realizing they are not alone, and also resources with which to solve problems. Frentz and Farrell, Peril, Turpin, and Jurgensen offer examples of major films and literature serving in this capacity. In analyzing The Exorcist, Pride and Prejudice, and The Lord of the Rings trilogy, the authors of these articles offer examples of how these archetypal works have served as equipment for living. The integration of good and evil, an ability to grow, part of the hero's journey, is essential in this process. Jurgensen talks about the four-step Christian process necessary for growth. The four steps are realization, repentance, strengthening, and teaching others. The films mentioned in most of the articles of the authors researched follow these steps. Frodo Baggins, Elizabeth Bennett, and Father Karras all follow these steps and becoming more whole and integrated beings. Their growth offers inspiration and equipment for living for us. Some films lack the necessary ingredients to be used as equipment for living. Terrell offers us an example of this in speaking of the film Batman Forever from 1989. Stories in film and literature where main characters are left in limbo with unresolvable imbalances are not discussed in the articles researched. To bring it up to date, in 2017, what about Game of Thrones or The Young Pope? This topic is of interest, but for another session. I'd like to argue that the film Pride and Prejudice offers equipment for living for women seeking to build self-confidence and the ability to stand up for their own best interests in three scenes. The first is Mr. Collins' proposal to Elizabeth Bennet. Mr. Collins is a weak-minded soul, just out to get the estate that's entailed to him. Elizabeth, desperate, desperate for her integrity and to be married for love and relationship of equals, refuses his marriage proposal, something that causes great distress to her mother. When the hero of the book, Mr. Darcy, first proposes marriage to Elizabeth, he does it in a condescending way, letting her know that she is not good enough for him, but that he can't help how much he admires her. In another act of bravery, courage, and self-confidence, Elizabeth refuses. Finally, when Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy both know independently that they want to spend their lives together, a rumor circulates that Mr. Darcy is going to ask Elizabeth to marry him. Mr. Darcy's aunt, Lady Catherine de Burgh, is very unhappy about this, as he is supposedly engaged to her daughter. She goes to Elizabeth's home, Longbourn, confronts her, and Elizabeth, with a shaking voice, stands up for herself and insists on her own happiness. Lizzie is a hero. After doing research on women who self-identify with Lizzie and those who haven't seen the film Pride and Prejudice, I would find examples of equipment for living in this film from Lizzie's actions. I would ask women questions about why they identify with Lizzie's strength and how, and if they can think of examples in their own lives where they have acted in strength. And if they haven't, why not? Lizzie is a visionary who sees outside the structure of society in which she is contained. And unlike Batman, according to Terrell in Batman Forever, she lacks nothing. She has all the equipment of a hero prepared to offer equipment for living to us, the viewers.
For me, Elizabeth Bennett is definitely a hero. She has served as an example to me along my journey for many years, since 1996 when this film first aired in the United States. I have studied and watched again and again, admiring Elizabeth's strength, self-confidence, and groundedness. I know that my journey to becoming Elizabeth Bennett will continue for a long time. All of the sources quoted in this presentation can be found in the original paper.